Welcome to the web series, Numbers Can Lie, when algorithms work perfectly but fail miserably. I'm Roger Woodard, the director of the online program in data science here at the University of Notre Dame. In this online series, we're going to expose you to the field of data science and how it's impacting the world around us. We are bringing together a group of Notre Dame experts, along with our guest, Kathy O'Neill, author of the book, Weapons of Math Destruction. Together, we're going to introduce you to what these tools can do and the ethical challenges they bring about. In this video, we're going to explore some of the terminology that will be used in this series. It's terminology that may be familiar to you, and some perhaps not. This will not be an in-depth lecture on data science, but it will provide you with a foundation that will allow you to join the conversation with our experts. Over the past 10 years, words like AI have been creeping into our vocabularies and our everyday usage. This accompanies the fact that we're undergoing a technological evolution. The technologies to which these terms refer have entered our lives and changed the way many things are done in our society. If you have a smart speaker like a Google Home or an Amazon Alexa, you have an artificial intelligence waiting to answer your questions. If you apply for a mortgage at the bank or send a resume in for a job, an algorithm probably takes a first look. Our teachers are evaluated by algorithms and the judges in our courts receive advice on sentencing from artificial intelligence. In this series, we're gonna dig into what these technologies are and how they impact our society. Let's start with a term you will hear quite a bit in this series, algorithms. Algorithms are just a step-by-step -step process, and we use algorithms every day to achieve various tasks. For example, I have a step-by-step -step process for making breakfast in the morning. Most of the time, when we refer to algorithms, we mean computer algorithms, which are precise sets of steps written in computer code. These are the instructions that a computer goes through to carry out a task. One of the great things about computers is that they are very good at carrying out tasks repeatedly. Once the algorithm is set, we can go through it quickly and efficiently. Computer algorithms are now in place in many applications around us. They process our credit card transactions to prevent fraud, and they decide if our email is spam. Another term that has entered the vernacular is artificial intelligence, or AI. AI is a tool that seems to be everywhere. If you use a GPS to plan your route home, you're using AI. AI can use face recognition to unlock your phone, and it can also help your doctor diagnose disease. When we discuss AI, we're typically referring to a computerized system that is trying to mimic some of the cognitive functions of the human brain. AI is a software system that reacts to stimuli to try to achieve a task. At their heart, AI is just a set of algorithms that take in that stimuli and respond based on their programming. There are many ways to create this programming for AI. In the past few decades, the method that has achieved the most success is what's called machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI. What makes machine learning different from other types of algorithms is how it's created. Traditional algorithms are built by a programmer who decides what actions to take when. For example, imagine we're trying to create an algorithm to decide if a person is a man or a woman based on their height. As a programmer, I might program in a rule that says if the person is over five foot nine inches tall, predict that they are male. Machine learning, on the other hand, takes a different approach Rather than the programmer selecting a cutoff and writing the algorithm, we give the computer a set of examples. Giving the computer this data is called training the algorithm. The computer learns to distinguish males and females based on the height variable. As it is learning, the computer also gets a grade. The data scientists who build the machine learning algorithms decide the criteria for evaluating the algorithm. We might want to maximize the overall percent of right answers. Just like a child in school, 
the computer will work hard to maximize their score on the test. Our example is pretty simple, and it only includes height as a predictor. But you can easily imagine using a variety of variables, such as weight or length of hair. The algorithm will try to find the combination of these variables that best classifies the individuals. Machine learning algorithms do a great job of sorting through variables and finding those that predict a result. There are many different types of machine learning systems, and they have names like random forests, support vector machines, and k-nearest neighbors. These have different methods of determining how to combine variables and produce a decision on each subject. Some of them are very simple, and some are more complex. Part of the art of building machine learning algorithms is selecting the system that you would want to use. One of the most complex methods is what we call a neural network. A neural network tries to mimic the function of the brain. The brain is made up of neurons that fire when we receive enough stimulus. In a neural network, we build artificial neurons that turn on when a variable they're attached to is big enough. Each neuron watches a certain stimuli. When it gets enough stimuli, it turns on. A neuron might turn on if a person is tall enough. Another neuron might turn on if a person has a certain length of hair. A neural network includes a large number of neurons that combine together to try and make a prediction. If enough of the neurons activate, they cause the decision neuron to activate. Just like all machine learning algorithms, a neural network is trained based on a set of examples. What values of the input characteristics will turn on which neurons is determined by the training examples. Originally, neural networks were simple and had only one layer of neurons connected to the decision neuron. In the more recent decades, much more complex neural networks have been built that use many layers of neurons. You might hear the buzzword deep learning that refers to a neural network with multiple layers of neurons. These deep learning models can take very complex input information and produce very complex decisions with amazing accuracy. This type of model is often behind the AI in everyday items like your smart speakers and the facial recognition that unlocks your cell phone. One of the challenges of these neural networks is that they're very complex, and it's difficult to understand exactly how the input stimuli combine to cause a particular response. This type of algorithm is known as a black box algorithm. The inputs and outputs are known, but what happens inside of the black box is a mystery. Black box algorithms can make it challenging to justify why decisions are made. For something like recognizing speech, this is not really that important. But when we consider using AI for employment or criminal justice applications, the lack of explainability can be very concerning. In this series, we're going to discuss more about the algorithms and the technologies that we've introduced here. We're going to delve into using these tools for the greater good. We're also going to examine some of the concerns with using these tools like the biases that can happen in these black boxes. I look forward to having you join us in this conversation. See you soon.